Hello sir, welcome to our CS2 assignment video. Our team consists of me, Hardik Devrangadi, 1RV17 EC050 and my friend Manas MD, 1RV17 EC067 from B section. In this video, we will learn about the theory of BFSK modulation and the non-coherent detection of BFSK and see its implementation on MATLAB. There are three types of digital modulation schemes, namely Amplitude Shift Keying also known as ASK, Phase Shift Keying also known as PSK and Frequency Shift Keying also known as FSK. These can be broadly classified into two categories, Band Limited and Power Limited Modulation Techniques. Band Limited Modulation Technique is used when the bandwidth available for transmission is limited. Normal uh, cellular communication uses this technique as telecom operators are allotted narrow bandwidth channels to provide services. To compensate for this, power is increased to maintain quality of service. The power modulation scheme is used when the power for transmission is limited. For example, in satellite communication, power available for transmission is very less, around 15 to 20 watts, but there is no limitation on the bandwidth available for transmission. ASK and PSK are examples of band limited modulation schemes. FSK is an example for power limited modulation schemes. Now let us discuss about frequency shift keying. Frequency shift keying is the modulation of carrier signal frequencies based on the input signal. In binary FSK, the input signal is represented using two symbols, 1 and 0. These symbols are distinguished from each other by transmitting one of the two sinusoidal waves that differ in frequency by a fixed amount. So now let's look at the mathematical aspects of binary FSK. As displayed on the screen, we can see that BFSK can be represented as two signals S1 and S2 at different frequencies F1 and F2. So the signal transmitted can be represented as root of 2 EB by T cos of 2 pi Fi of T where Fi can take two values F1 and F2 based on the formula NC plus I by TB where NC is a standard starting frequency and I is the symbol number and TB is the bit duration. This symbol value is held between a time of 0 to TB that is 1 bit time. Other places the symbol will be 0. So having these two symbols now using Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization we can find the basis functions. Since the symbols in FSK are orthogonal to each other, each symbol will have a unique basis function. So we can divide the symbol by the energy to find the basis function. The basis functions are displayed on the screen. Now let's analyze the basis function using the constellation diagram. To find the coefficients for the constellation diagram, we have to multiply the symbol into the basis function. Upon multiplication, we get the symbols as shown in the figure, root of EB, no, EB and 0, the other symbol as 0 and root EB. On plotting this on a xy axis or based on the basis function phi1 and phi2, we get that bo as both are orthogonal, the symbol 1 is on phi1 axis, symbol 2 is on phi2 axis at a distance of root EB from the origin. There is a decision boundary which is x equal to y line or phi1 equal to phi2 line. The distance between the two symbols is root 2 EB. The regions of the symbols are shown in the constellation diagram. So now let, let's look at the BFSK transmitter architecture. So here the binary data sequence is passed to a unipolar NRZ on off level encoder. As you know unipolar encoder has two levels 1 and 0. So when the symbol 1 it pa transmits to this at, it is modulated at a frequency f1 that is the basis function. On multiplication the signal is then transmitted through the channel AWGN channel. Assuming the same symbol comes down, it becomes inverted to 0. So 0 into the basis function will be 0. And when added, 
won't produce any change. Let's take the example for the symbol being as 0. So as the symbol transfers to the upper channel, it multiplies with the basis function phi1 and it becomes 0. When the same symbol goes into the inverter, it becomes 1 that is then multiplied with the basis function phi2 and the phi2 function transmits through the channel. So for both the symbols 1 and 0, this architecture works perfectly. Now the modulated signal is then passed through a AWGN channel, additive white Gaussian noise channel. Now let's discuss about the demodulation of BFSK signal. Why is demodulation required? We require demodulation to convert the modulated signal with noise into an interpretable form to get back the original signal. There are two types of demodulation techniques, coherent detection and non-coherent detection. In coherent detection, the phase, amplitude and frequency are known. But in case of non-coherent detection, the phase isn't known whereas the frequency and amplitude are known. Now, let us see how non-coherent demodulation occurs for the BFSK signal using the receiver architecture. The receiver architecture consists of four main components, the matched filter, envelope detector, sampler and the comparator. Now, let us consider the non-coherent receiver in more detail. The modulated signal which is sent from the transmitter is passed through a channel which is not ideal. Hence, the received signal is the addition of the modulated signal with noise which is of Gaussian nature. This mixed signal is received which is marked as X of T at the receiver's end. This signal is passed along two paths and it arrives at the match filter stage. The architecture consists of two match filters, the upper filter matched to the phi1 basis function and the lower one matched to the phi2 basis function as used in the modulation stage. A matched filter works on the basis of the convolution of the incoming signal with the match signal. The output of this stage resembles an ASK signal. This signal is then passed through an envelope detector which extracts and holds the maximum amplitude value of the intermediate ASK signal. The output of this envelope detector is then sampled at regular intervals of TB or bit time. Output signals of both the samplers denoted as X1 and X2 are then fed to a comparator which subtracts X1 and X2. The level is decided based on the difference value. If the difference is greater than 0, then the output bit is decided as 1. If the difference is lesser than 0, then the output bit is decided as 0. This is how the architecture works. For a coherent detection scheme, a correlator is used instead of these components. The correlator consists of two components, a multiplier and an accumulator. The multiplier multiplies the incoming signal with the basis function and the signal is passed on to the accumulator. The outputs of the two accumulators is then given to a comparator followed by a decision device. Let us consider an example to understand where coherent and non-coherent detection schemes are used. In case of cellular communication, at the time of connection, the receiver operates in non-coherent detection mode as the phase of the transmitted signal is not known. Once the phase is identified, the receiver switches over to the coherent detection scheme which has more efficiency because of its lower probability of error. So now let us take a look at the MATLAB code. So initially we clear and close all the workspace and the functions, initializing variables and the required parameters such as SNR, number of bits, frequency difference. Here in the code we are considering the plot for 10 different SNR values namely from 0 to 10 in steps of 1. We are creating a stream of random bits between 0 and 1 so that it acts as an input to our modulation. For modulation we are making use of FSK mod whose inputs are the input stream of data 
n value, which is 2 for binary FSK, the difference between the frequencies of the basis functions, the tone, which is the number of sample per symbol, Fs is the sampling frequency for the mass filter. So any more, any real signal has two parts, in-phase component and the quadrature component. So the in-phase component is nothing but the real part. Hence, we extract the real part of the modulated signal and store it in I channel 1. And there's a quadrate phase, which is nothing but the imaginary part. So we extract that of the modulated signal and put it in quadrate phase. We calculate the power of the signal as the summation of the square of the in-phase and the quadrature parts and divide it by the total number of bits to find the average power. So an attenuation factor, which is a power, which is a, uh, which is a function of the SNR value as well as the power is defined. So now any channel has, has to have some noise. No channel is ideal. So we add some Gaussian noise, which is in terms of random variables to the quadri, quadri channel and uh, as well as the in-phase channel, which is multiplied by a attenuation factor, which we have previously computed. Now we put this to a, now we add the in-phase component as well as quadri phase component to find the final signal, which is passing through the channel. Now, at, for non-coherent demodulation, we can use make and make use of the FSK demod function. So the inputs are nothing but the noisy stream, that is stream of data which is coming through the channel, M, which is 2 for binary FSK, FD is the difference between the basis function frequencies, tone is nothing but the number of sampling points per uh, symbol, FS is nothing but the sampling frequency for the master filter. Now, the output of this is got as a vector demod data. So demod data consists of the bits which are demodulated. So all the steps which is uh, uh, mass filter followed by envelope followed by sampling happens and then after the comparison we get the final bits. So now we need to find the error. For any performance we need to find what's the error of the what's the error. So we use the system error function where we give the input as the demod data, which is the output of the receiver and then serial data, which is the input to the transmitter. So since the, the serial data is the data which is originally sent and demod data is the data which is received after modulation and demodulation, it computes the error between them. From this, we get the rate at which the error appears and the number of errors. So for each of the SNR value, we find the number of errors and compute the percentage. Now, for theoretically, there is a formula for calculating uh, the error of the probability of error of the non-coherent as well as coherent detection. These are the formulas. So, now let us interpret the outputs. In figure 1, we can see there are two waveforms present. One is in the blue line and one is in the red line. The blue line represents a BFSK signal in a noiseless channel or at the transmitter end. Here we can clearly see two frequencies present. One is of the higher frequency, one is of the lower frequency. At the receiver end or actually at the end of the channel, a lot of noise is added. So we get a distorted wave which is represented as the red waveform in the figure. Now let us consider figure 2. Figure 2 is a plot between the input bits and the output demodulated bits. If the bits are the same then we it gets marked in a x. If the bits are different or if there is an error it is marked in a 0. So there is a decision boundary which is nothing but the line black line which is passing through the figure we can clearly see that there are a lot of red circles present and hence there is a good probability of error for this particular SNR value. So figure 3. Figure 3 is nothing but a plot between the simulated non-coherent BFSK error and the theoretical non-coherent BFSK error. So as you see that the red line is the theoretical value and blue line is a simulated value. Here we can see that there is a clear difference between the two values. This is between because of the presence of the attenuation factor and noise. So 
as the noise increases the probability of error also increases hence there is a deviation from the theoretical value now let us come at our final plot this plot is nothing but the coherent versus non coherent probability of error for different snr values from 0 to 10 as you can see that the coherent probability of error plot is in blue color and the non coherent is in red color the blue line is below the red line so it clearly states that the probability of error for coherent is much less than probability of error for non coherent detection and the gradual difference keeps increasing as the snr value increases The disadvantages are, it requires more bandwidth than the ASK and PSK modulation schemes. Due to the requirement of this large bandwidth, the FSK has limitations to use only in low speed modems, where the bitrate is 1200 bits per second. So let us look at some of the applications of FSK. Initially, FSK was used in low speed modem communications systems but now it has been replaced with high speed so nowadays fsk is being used in systems such as telemetry weather balloon radio sounds caller id garage door openers and low frequency radio transmission in vlf and elf bands now we have reached the end of this video hope we have been able to provide you with a clear idea about FSK modulation and non-coherent demodulation along with its MATLAB implementation and analysis. Thank you for watching our video.